Hey everyone, welcome back to the Chuckle Sandwich Podcast. This is apparently the number six comedy podcast on Spotify, according to a certain metric. We have no idea what that entails. If that is indicative of how much numbers don't mean anything, I don't know what is. <laughs> we don't even know if it's true. Think, why are we on the comedy charts, guys? <laughs> I, 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 this has never been good. This has we never really, been funny, and yet we keep climbing. We should really be on the crime charts. Yeah, you. this should be on the uh, the atrocities chart. <laughs> I agree. True crime. We commit, we, and we commit it every time. Crimes against mankind. Influencers yeah. are ruining the world. I'm sure that every single podcast host that's been doing this they've been grinding every day the blood sweat and tears they put into this podcast grind and then they just see these fucking asshole 20 year olds just climb up the they just see us they just see us climbing their hands are right bloodied up. from no. punching walls mm. all day for the last mm. several days weeks even um but yeah welcome back uh last episode we had minx on the podcast and today Ugh. it's just us on our lonesome Ugh. can we you never know? have her back on again thank we God. considered bringing her on as a uh, as our new member but unfortunately uh after the podcast recording ended her and schlatt um got into a really really serious argument if you want to yeah. elaborate on that schlatt. yeah well uh we we were actually talking about um why she sent a box of butt plugs to my house yeah, I don't think that there's quite an answer to that question. Either. I mean, no, and I'd like to not talk about it again, Ted. Oh, okay. You've got it. You've got it. We I don't talk like about, just a minx. We won't talk about the package of sensual blood. There were different plugs. sizes, too. She texted me, like, work the up. Whole, you know, get practicing. A, 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 a butt plug charcuterie. Is that an appropriate thing? Yeah, yeah. She didn't even Actually, ask, it's a, it, completely inappropriate. She didn't even ask if you already had any. It's just. I know, I know. I she just big, assumed. There's a, there's a she bit just of a assumed g- I'd never broken my butt in. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And now Come you've on. got two big boxes of. That's the <laughs> worst thing a person can do. That's the worst thing a person can do too. Just assuming that you haven't broken your butt in. And Ted, yeah. Ted, for the record, it's charcuterie. All right, but you will not say charcuterie in my household. What the fuck is charcuterie? What are you guys saying? You know, you know, charcuterie. It's from the charcut. It's from the charcut region. What pasta, of, what pasta is this? Do I put it, pesto on this, or do I put the? Uh, no, you're thinking do I put Italian, the man. Do I put the tomato? What are you doing? Do what are you, you thinking of Italian oh, sauce? Oh my God! Oh, what are you doing, Tony? Oh, either way. Um, recently, I kind of became sort of badass. No. I, and, I, and I'd like to talk about it. I'm sure that some of our... I saw you actually on the Oscar nominees, and no one can disprove that yeah, because the no Oscars one watched. Yeah, just happened. You were yeah. there. You were there. It was incredible. It's true. It's I was, true. You know, they did... They... <laughs> what are you going to do? Say I'm wrong? How the fuck would you know? <laughs> Is it the, the Oscars, you know, it was really, really strange how the, the Oscars didn't invite me. I was... I, uh, it was honestly, weird. I, it was similar weird. to the podcast host yeah. in which we blew past with the speed of a thousand suns, I was bloodying my hands when the Oscars didn't bring me to the show. Cause right, I was just like you bloodied uh, all the bones in my body a couple years ago. Exactly. You know very well firsthand, Schlatt, about what do. that is all yeah, about. Yeah. I Poor mean, choice of words firsthand. Really? You barely use really? my hand you anymore. Yeah. You are sick, man. Yeah. But since the Oscars Jeez. just happened, I suppose it would be fun to talk about my experience. Because I did one of the biggest videos that I've ever done recently, which was my... Thank you. Appreciate that. My, and it turned out great, by the way. It was really good. And I'm jealous. Thank you very much, Charles. That you got this Thank opportunity. Yeah, I worked with Universal. For those of you who are <laughs> Schlatt or Charles fans who don't follow my channel, I worked with Universal. And I did a uh, sponsorship with them. They had this new movie, Nobody, with uh, beautiful Robert Odenkirk. Um who it's it's basically John Wick, but with like an older middle aged man that's already got kids and he's got like this internal fucking rage that mm. uh he used to be like a special forces agent of some degree. I th- I think it's gonna be a uh mm. I think it's gonna be a series. But Universal reached out to me, or really they reached out to my manager and they were like, Hey, we wanna do influencer marketing. So we're gonna have you Work with us, Universal Studios, the movie studio, and that is we're so gonna insane, dude. and we're going to have, or so I cool. guess Universal Pictures, um, and we're gonna have you 
recreate a scene from this movie. And me, fucking filmmaker Ted, hey, look at me. I'm making YouTube videos and I'm feeling like I'm a piece of shit for not making anything of artistic quality. I'm like, Went oh, to film shit. school, finally time to put it to fucking <laughs> yes, time, <laughs> finally. finally time. For real. Honestly, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people who go there a long time without utilizing their their degree. I'm like like my mom went to school for kinesiology. Yeah. Oh. And she and she she's like not a, a kinesiologist. I, I think that's that's uh <laughs> that's like physical therapy or something. I think that's the old oh. word for physical therapy or something like that. And what does your that. mom do now? Oh she's like a she's like a uh, so wait, that's what they used to burn people at the stake for she's like, an, <laughs> like she's like an administrative manager at this company hmm. that they they like yeah. I don't, you know how do you guys have parents that just don't know what like you no matter how many times they tell you you just don't know really what their job is because it's so yeah I, for the life of me I can't figure out what Charlie's mother does <laughs> okay well Charlie's mom is probably the easiest well, one well slide I can always <laughs> I just don't remind get it. you <laughs> she's just let's straight stick, up a baker let's stick this question in the oven and let it rise <laughs> up a little bit hey nice yeah she's but um either way. I, it was really cool that Universal reached out. And yeah. what was even cooler was that I got to do the... It, it was... Um, originally, what was going to happen... So what, what I did was I, I met up with this guy who is the stunt coordinator on the film. He's an action actor, which means that he, he acts and does his own stunts. He was on an episode of Barry. There was, if you guys have seen the show Barry... He was this guy, uh, I think his name was like... I forget what his name was, but it was this Barry. guy... Barry. Spent this entire Barry. episode... Barry was trying to keep this guy in line. It was uh, Daniel Bernhardt, and he was in a bunch of uh, he's in a bunch of movies and shit. Uh, he was in he was in John Wick. He was like one of the main bad guys in John Wick that oh, fought yeah, Keanu yeah. Reeves. Mm. Barry John, yeah, good old John. Um, but and he also got his legs broken by Harley Quinn in the new Harley Quinn movie, uh, Birds Harley. of Prey. Ooh. Harley. Are we just gonna <laughs> just gonna keep saying the name every time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was originally what they were going to do was have me just do it over zoom. zoom. Oh no. Yeah. Right. And what I was, hell? and I, and I was like totally hounded my manager and was like, dude, you gotta, you gotta make it, you gotta bother universal until they let me do this shit. <laughs> like in they just what did they you, want you to do on you, zoom? They send you one of those like human flesh they torso me- replicas and just a knife and <laughs> get on call with you. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me to meet with Daniel over Zoom exclusively. Hmm. Yeah. And that's Daniel. it. Just talk Very. with him, like tell a few well, jokes. No, like I had done I had done some other Zoom calls with him where I did the practice the moves and stuff. Um, but then and then after all of that was through, like halfway through the process of doing the sponsorship, they were like, Hey, you can actually meet up with Daniel and do this shit in person. Daniel. And that and that totally changed the video, I think, for me. Yeah. Um well, you got the in-person experience now. Now you can really kill people. Yeah, right? honestly. You know, yeah. how to, you know how to do some hits, take some falls. Does this make you guys nervous Break at some all? Glass. Nervous? No, we no, already, because... Uh, if you, no, if I, you I, wanted I, us dead, we would be, Ted, at the end of the day, mm, right? I don't so, know if that's true. true. No, I don't know if that's true, true Ted. I mean, no, I'm, I am the only, I mean, I'm the only carrier here. You're the only carrier? Carrier. What does that mean? Of various illnesses and weaponry. You, you carry... <laughs> You carry illnesses and little illnesses little, little and weapon bottles. That's I, what I, I do. I, just I, I, carry, I carry tiny little vials. Slash <laughs> just opens up a briefcase and he's got a bunch of syringes. <laughs> like one's like measles, another's like malaria. Yep. Yep. He just yep. sneaks up behind people. That makes you I, way I got more everything. dangerous than me. And I could probably <laughs> carry Schlatt, so now I'm at the top of the food chain. I break you know? Schlatt's yeah. arm once mm. with a bat in his childhood, and that causes him to become a man that carries around a briefcase <laughs> full of every That's disease. Just different, different plague <laughs> i was He's actually like put in charge of uh oh man i remember when they put me in charge of killing kim jong nam in an airport yeah uh, how'd that go what was oh the, no what was your what was your uh assassination thing of choice um shouldn't have said that you wouldn't know it they haven't seen it in 200 years <sighs> oh like, just like some, an just ancient- some plague yeah, just, just some, some plague. One, just some plague. From just, any just Indian, a plague. Like yeah, I, scooped it out of the, I scooped it out of the European mud. Uh, like, <laughs> found a strain. Pretty there. much any time they open up an Isolated. Egyptian tomb, there's some disease that comes out of that that they yeah, haven't yeah. seen in five thousand years. So I go to different I go to different uh, openings and then open them up and then catch whatever it is in a bottle. <laughs> I go to case openings. <laughs> <laughs> Egyptian tomb case CSGO case <laughs> opening. Yep, yep. I'm there. I'm there. 
<laughs> Can you imagine too? Like, a you, legendary. You open it up and then you just see like these dimensions just sliding across until it just sli- <laughs> eventually lands on the one. And it's like, oh great, you got a what? What's that one knife called? I, I don't Karimba. Say that Karimba. Sharp. What they're called. Karimba. Kar- Karambit. Karambit. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got a karambit locust swarm. Oh wow, <laughs> karambit fade. The, the a soft like light <laughs> glows whenever you bust open the the case, and you're like, oh, is this a legendary? <laughs> oh, sweet epic frog. Play. Oh my god, it's a legendary. It's the it's the it's the soul of a of a little child that had been <laughs> trampled by horses in 800 BC. Fantastic. You open one up. It's just it's just like a blue light, and everyone's like, "Fuck!" You know, <laughs> holy oh, shit! Oh my god! Yeah, and then all of the all of the workers that because you you ever notice how in all of those in all of those movies it's always that's just a, like that's a Gretchen soul right there. <laughs> it's always all of those workers that are that are clearly like locals in Egypt or something, and then there's that like one fucking white guy that comes in with his sunglasses and yeah. his like <laughs> Hawaiian his shirt, <laughs> and he's like and he's like work, and he's like just being an ass to everyone yeah 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 they always get the short end of the stick um but yeah i mean speaking of disease i mean i'm a little bit more dangerous though schlatt i mean i can't speak to you say are. that i have a briefcase full of speaking of diseases let's go back to you Tag. yeah okay wow wow. <laughs> wow thanks for that oh appreciate that uh, literal <clears throat> name after slime is your username Ooh. hey hey we're, uh, listen listen Just man saying. Listen, we're number six for a reason, all right? It's all fun and games here. It's all yeah. fun and games. I so you're you, a bit more dangerous now, Ted. I am a bit more dangerous. Um, and one of the really, really cool things that I got to do um, was their uh, Universal invited me to this really, really cool thing, which was a, it was a showing of the mm-hmm. movie Nobody. It, it was a drive-through showing of it in mm. universal studios oh shit yeah and they had i don't I, I don't know what the type of like this type of event necessarily is for i think it's for like some of it is like journalism and some of it journalism. is like friend like like might just yeah, be press and influencers like press, they kind of scoop them press together influencers and friends and family because yeah. they had yeah. this they had this it was a quote-unquote drive-through experience that they had and it okay. was i was driving through this universal thing through the back lot and they've got this and they have an entire uh fucking suburbs like what? like colonial houses a, a straight up street lawns suburbs there are suburbs within universal studios in the middle of like la a set? that are it's like a set but it looks like they're all houses there's just straight up completely built houses it's huh. wild um and we were driving through that and you 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 put your uh radio to a certain thing so it plays like music kind of like the how you would do a drive through but this was for the experience part and they had an yeah. entirely choreographed 360 thing like you're sitting in your car and you've got these all actors that they hired to do this like fight scene that was representative of the movie uh right before the the screening and it was like it was very interesting it was like a theater show but it was for the movie it was really really weird but it was really wow. really cool um so that was I didn't it. even know about, I didn't even know about this part actually oh yeah no I hadn't told I don't think I've, I've, I've yeah I've, I've you hadn't mentioned you guys it. about this yeah. part yeah, no, that was like, it was probably one of the, definitely the coolest sponsorships I've ever gotten to do because it came with all these things. Oh, oh, hey, hey, thanks for doing this thing for us. Come go to this cool screening thing for the movie. It felt like I was part of I like of the it process when they make it an experience. Of, yeah, right? it was like, I felt like I was, it definitely wasn't a fucking wish sponsorship, that's for sure. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You you always get as a YouTuber, you get these crappy ass, like, oh. oh. I'm about to sneeze. I'm gonna keep. It? I'm gonna power through. You always get these always, crappy, okay. crappy sponsorships. Come on. <laughs> I'm it. over here doing fucking raid shadow legends, and Ted is going to goddamn movies and shit. I, sure. I'm jealous. How do you get that? Who do I have to talk to? Whose cock do I have to give a little tickle to? I don't know. I think that. I mean, hmm. it's tough because I think that because of the style of channel I have, I have a very different style of channel from you guys. That that's true. Um, because they went. The, I the want them to person- dress dress Schlatt and I up like the Raid Shadow Legends characters and have us like <laughs> fight in a cobblestone room. <laughs> that that would be a that would be a sponsor worth. That doing would be right cool. There. That yeah. would be I cool. Think also, the probably the bigger that you guys get, like a lot of those games will just be like, hey, we we're gonna design a character because they didn't dream get something like that. He got like a character. He got a dream dragon. In, yeah, in, a dream. 
in like age I know, of I know this because I looked like at it and I was like, I wanna, I want like a, I want like. I a remember looking at it. Dragon. It was like a six-legged. It looked like a monster. It was, it was terrifying. <laughs> it it yes, like, well, it I mean, like it is a dragon. Loosely, tangentially related to <laughs> dream, like they yeah, were making it, was, it anyway and put a smiley face on it, it but like still, it genuinely like if you add that dream face to anything else than what his normal branding is, it looks like a Ghibli movie demon. Like, ooh, that's <laughs> true. It uh, does from fucking Spirited Away. Just like has the mask on it. Yeah. The actual working with Daniel was re- was really really cool because it, it was uh it was within Very. the eighty seven eighty seven North was the production company that did it, but the actual name of that location was eighty seven eleven Action Design, and the mm-hmm. guy that was recording my um footage, uh Jeremy, he was super super Jeremy. fun to work with, Jeremy. Um. And I, turn, I looked him up on, he's got like this whole laundry list on IMDb of all of the shit that he's worked on. He's recording, they, they got him to just like film my YouTube video for me. And this guy has worked on like, he's been in, he's been a stunt guy in like Marvel movies. He's like, what? doing all, he's done what? all this fucking shit. He literally has been working in this industry since like 2008. The dude's got, and the dude's holding the camera <laughs> for my And YouTube then in, in wanders Theodore, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was like. <laughs> Yeah, it was weird because it was such an interesting mixture of like them being really not understanding what I do, but being very, very like excited about it. And then also me personally, where I come from with my film shit, just feeling yeah. totally out of my depth, like just working with them. And they're all like, oh, yes, yes. Oh, another, if you haven't seen the movie, too, when I did the uh, they gave me like a little. In the movie, there, there's this one point where Bob is like, mm-hmm. he's trying to get this kitty cat Bob. bracelet back from the Very. bad guys. And, and when I was doing the Universal Experience thing, they gave me like a, a ver- like a, a copy of the actual min- kitty cat bracelet prop. They give that to everyone as they're coming in. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. cool. That's fun. But either way, I mean, that was Did pretty Did you get much- to keep the rubber weapons? I do, yeah. I've got them in the background. Oh, really that's like, fun. Nice. That's the one yeah. thing. All of the Dude, rubber the... weapons I got to keep. And I was surprised, too, that I still have... One of the things that I didn't use was a squib kit. They gave me a squib kit, which is like you can do the gunshot. That's for one. blood hits and shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have one of those. So, like, we could use Ooh. that for a bit at some point. And some, I could just oh, bust really that cool. out in some video in the future. You yeah. totally should. Nah, you totally that's, should. Called, that's, called, that's called not committing here on yeah. the Charcoal Sandwich podcast. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Ted, yeah. I, I got a question I about a squib, this. I got a squib kit. It's called, uh, it's called organs. Hmm? We do it real or we don't we do, it, do it all. <laughs> we earn if, the I actually have a couple vials I that, kind that of can agree help with that. Charlie on this. <laughs> no, I'm not... worried about it. Those may be tainted with a, <laughs> I don't even know what. <laughs> I mean, come on. Graveyards are like the second most common thing around, I think. So I, I mean, if know. you're not willing to go dig up a dig up, Cheryl, Gra- did you? I'm sorry. Did you just say graveyards are the second most common thing? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck does that even mean? <laughs> Everybody what dies. The, what, Everybody what is the, dies. What is the most common thing? I, well, <laughs> heart disease, like. What? I guess maybe <laughs> heart disease and graveyards are connected in that they are the most common thing because <laughs> one causes the other oh, what's God. this list what's this fucking I'm list of saying, the most I'm common saying, things I'm just, I'm just going off of what charlie's saying about using real blood and stuff if you're trying to make the movies you it's weird that number three is, it's weird that number three is dead people right like you'd think yeah. it would be a bu- or the, like maybe, maybe the same at least at and the yet same, graveyards you know? is still number two it's well charlie you know why like it make is. an extra tombstone why you know why dead people are less are less more common than graveyards is because people w- there are people who buy their grave spots in advance before they die but then they don't oh no oh. they use them one that, w- once they die they use them <laughs> I was like, I was, I wouldn't understand. I was well, like, they, they, yeah. they, they don't, they don't use them. <laughs> Great. No, Can I you mean, imagine having to rent? How inappropriate oh to God. rent out that space. Rent out Dude, that space, all for nothing. Imagine that you lease out grave space. <laughs> you, you just like own an entire graveyard. Is that how graveyards work? No, it's not. I mean, they, you. Uh... I don't know. Connery's it's... pants. Welcome oh. to the Chuckle Sandwich Podcast. Man. Finally, a good Connor's guest back, everybody. On. Thank God. Connor, Connor, have you ever died? Look at what how the fuck? Skittles. Connor got sent a box of okay. Skittles. Now, now, hold on. There's nine of these. <laughs> we you have got sent nine boxes times of nine. <laughs> hold on. Jesus Christ. 
Who's sending you Skittles? Is it Skittles? Skittles himself? is. He's just in with Skittles somehow. What? Well, he's gonna did get you, the he's, he's gonna get the Connor burger too. I saw Connor on Twitter don't, talking don't, up to don't Mr. Say Beast. That. Don't don't say that. I, Thanks, I, I, I don't want to talk about that until there's a slurger. And that's Connor. And a that's slurger? Connor. Best you know member. Char Charlie, you know, I think Slurger would probably be the worst name for a burger <laughs> under your name. <laughs> slurger would be mine. Slur I think I'd be done. Mine I would think I'd be, be Slurger. Done. Yeah, uh, if anything would be, no, yours would be, would be there's, a, there's an emphasis. Yours would be Slurger. Wow. Slurger. Yeah. Slurger. It sounds like you're about to, it sounds like you're throwing something up, but it's not. Mine would be the mine Schlurger. would be the mine would be the BL Ted. I have very strong opinions on BLTs. I know how to make a good BLT. Ooh. What's in a good BLT? What were we what were we talking about before Connor came? I was in, gonna well, what I wanted to say was that I was very jealous of one part in your video in specific that you didn't really talk about that much, where you were just in the gym with all the stunt coordinators yeah. uh, beating the shit out of each other. That yeah. was the part I was most excited you about. Looked really like there were like... some parts where even some of you got like thrown around in uh, yeah. uh, uh, quite a bit of distance into like soft objects. I oh. I thought that was kind of um, cool. Yeah, you would really like that gym, Charlie. I think. You know why? I would. I look. That's why I'm jealous. That I entire floor that I was on, that blue floor, is bouncy. I'm, I'm it's, into it. It's is it like, a spring floor? Is it yeah, a spring floor? Yeah, it's like floor? a spring floor. Yeah. Spring floors are fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah, That's it was very like, cool. Yeah, you can... Because um, they can just do falls and shit, and you're not going to get hurt. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, overall, it was a very, very, very cool experience. It was one of those experiences, and this is a little life lesson for all of you, especially our audio listeners out there, love you to death. That I was I was a little bit unsure when I had the option to do it. It was like they came out and they were like, hey, you want to do this? Because it seemed at first glance, you know, this I've never done a video like that before. And it was very, yeah. very nerve wracking. But one thing that I I kind of had a moment at one point where I wasn't sure. And then I realized I was like, oh, shit, this is one of those moments in like life where you have to do something that's a where you it where you. Because you're not going to get those experiences in like school or something anymore where you do no. something that you feel like you're not prepared to do and that you have to. The only Just way you're going to figure that take shit it. out is if you take these things that, where yep. you feel a little bit out of your depth. And I would definitely suggest that for all of you out there. If you feel like there's a project you don't know if you should do, just fucking try. You what know? they have you do? I mean, I had to I had to pull together an entire crew and recreate this scene and direct it and uh, and, and contact everyone. It was location. yeah, and you had to do the stunts with everyone and speak with Bob. Yeah. It, it was a lot. To, it was a I whole to, thing. I had to teach the moves to uh, Ryan and uh, Hunter and Mister Sir Spence, which were they were fucking fantastic too. They they yeah. learned that shit really fast, and they you know they don't have any experience with that kind of stuff, so it was really cool that they were willing to do that. Um, but Man, that is such a cool experience. Yeah, Jesus. no, it was really I, cool. I agree with you though. I had I had a moment like that um, when I was in uh, when I was still studying in college, and when I was going to fly out to uh, the same day I was going to fly out to Dublin to study abroad for a semester. Um, I had Ubisoft want to fly me out to like fucking West Virginia for Far Cry Five or something. And see, like that's driver. A, see, Schlatt, that's exactly in the zone that I'm thinking would be the yeah, equivalent. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and there hasn't been much since the pandemic, which is a shame, but like drive around on ATVs and like all this yeah. crazy shit. And I wanted to do it like so badly, but it was the same day I left uh, for abroad. And um, I was just trying to figure out what I'd do. Uh, and then my stepdad was like, it's fine. You'll probably get opportunities like this again. And then the pandemic happened. I yeah. haven't been able to ride in an ATV. Dude, I'm telling you, once the, you're you doing uh, the best you've ever done, Charlie. Once the pandemic ends, you'll be able to do all those cool oh, things. They're, they're going to come. I believe it. You think, you, you think Ubisoft's going to see my slime sickle clips online? Ubisoft has some pretty uh, pretty big pockets. The One of the the first time that I ever went to PAX East, when, before I was ever a content creator. Ubisoft and I are pretty... Are pretty uh, um, was it was it Ubisoft that did the division? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Moses, before the division was like literally like in 2013 or something, maybe mm -hmm. 2012. No, I think 2013. Moses was... It had just been announced and Moses was like one of the only... Um, cosplayers. This is back when Moses did cosplay for the division, and they invited Moses. They gave Moses free tickets to PAX, and yeah. I got one of those tickets. So that was that's, like my. That's a cool. That's probably connection. the earliest, earliest time that I ever experienced that sort of like free influencer kind of stuff. 
like the closest Ubisoft thing to that. Ubisoft does a lot of that, actually. That's that's also how I met the Corridor Digital guys. So they have they do a lot mm, more of those. I wanted events. to meet There's, those motherfuckers, dude. And and uh, yeah, I did I did too, and it was a little awkward. But that was one of the moments where I was glad. Like I I saw them and I was like, They're if so I don't smart. approach them, if I don't approach them now, even if I'm weird, at least I approach them. You know what I mean? Those guys like, are. At least I, I did it. I have so much respect for those guys. They are so cool. They are they are so talented and they are they they wear so many hats in what they do and they're just they're I could they're, not do what they do. And yeah. like that is and that is something that to me I, when I I, def- I don't yeah. know. I don't know. That like means a lot. Yeah. No, it was very cool. Schlatt, what was the biggest thing I mean so you've only done the the the, the Raid Shadow Legends? I mean you're you're Yeah, you're I, I have not taken any crazy ed deals. Um which is why when you when you, I mean, we had that conversation with Gus Johnson uh, back in his episode, and he was talking about the the uh, relationship between Hollywood, this kind of old media, and yeah. this new YouTube influencer culture kind of thing. And I'm just wondering, like, I mean, you met all these crazy people who are all old media. You know, yeah. how did they treat you? Would you say they oh, they respected the uh, the influencer life of Ted Nivison? Um. I, yeah, actually. Um, they were, well, pretty much the only people that I had, like, truly met was um, was Daniel and all the guys that worked at 8711. And they were Daniel. all super, super, like, cool, helpful, nice. They were just treating it like it was any other, like, like job. And, like, you know, when you're, I mean, they were just very, very friendly. And I think people in the film industry in general, from my experience and from the sets that I've been on, like as, as long as you're working hard and you're not a fuck ass, like mm. the people are going to be, everyone's in the, a lot of times on sets, everyone's in the shit together, but whatever the case, these guys were very, okay. very friendly and it was cool. Um, but I do agree that I think that uh, Universal has never done anything like this before. So I was trying to, in me tr- going out of the way to make it like as use as much of my film shit as possible i was also kind of trying to make sure that universal was like let's do it again let's do it again not necessarily for me but just for youtubers in general like that's a really cool thing that i hope that they keep doing because yes i saw so and and i wouldn't have ever accepted a brand deal of that size if i didn't truly believe that this was like one of the coolest things that i could i could do for a like an entirely sponsored video i've never done a fully integrated video like that before but like that's so cool and that's like such a thing that interests me that it's not it's not even a it, it was it was not a cop-out at all it yeah. wasn't like oh hey watch this movie i don't care about the movie it was good it's like so it was like i had no reason not to but um i, I well i forget what i was saying i i I don't you know. Dedic- you, you dedicated, know dedica- dedicated videos are weird. Like it's one of those things where yeah. I've I've done uh, quite a few over on Slumkickle, and I always like play the game for like thirty minutes or like an hour first to make sure it's something that I I don't know. You you always want to make the good content first, right? So it's like, yeah. If this is con- conducive to doing that, sure. And you yeah. had like this opportunity is is something I actually I think you'd regret if you passed up. Like I'm very glad you did. Yeah. It. The, so the one thing that I noticed about being in the comments was that people were saying that Mm -hmm. oh hey i saw this movie being advertised to me and i wouldn't have normally seen it but now that you've worked with a youtuber and universal was cool enough to do something with a youtuber something that relates to me more of shit that i like to watch yeah i'll check out this movie it actually seems interesting because they and they and they honestly had a really cool concept of how they would like turn that into a video originally it was the the original idea was it was going to be like a challenge between William Osmond and I, uh. but that didn't really make too much sense because we're both doing separate videos. Um, and it, so we, there wasn't really, I feel like if there was a challenge between the two of us, it had to be one video. So it was like, we, we both kind of decided just, Hey, we're going to do our own kind of journey on our own, but either way, I mean, it was, it was very cool. And I think that universal will definitely got a lot of, um, respect points from the online world for doing Good. something like that, which is cool. And maybe that's why they did it. Or maybe universal, like all corporations, has a heart, guy. <laughs> Come on. Disney or Mickey Mouse is a real boy. Come on. Walt, Disney is pe- when Disney Walt is Disney is founded too. this company, <laughs> he wanted to spread love to everybody. And he loved everybody. And exactly. he loved you. Exactly. <laughs> and he Disney loved is you. a person. Disney it's- is a person, and we should we should treat them as such. And 
I am going to rent gravestone space and lease it to people for a monthly fee when they die. Transnational multimedia conglomerates are people. Isn't that a, like, uh, wasn't that a moment in some show or some dystopian I think that's a moment in real life. Yeah, it is. Like, legally, oh, yeah, let's be considered as people. I feel like this happened. I don't want to slip on my words here. A can be considered a person? I remember some political, old fucking political cartoon about this. Maybe it was, like, lobbying or something, but, like, a big oil baron in the back. I don't yeah. know if anyone fucking knows what I'm talking about right now. Something, maybe an oil baron. Yeah. Dude, I would... You know, would... Schlatt, you know yes. Schlatt, if you were born in another age, you would definitely be the poster child for an oil baron. Yeah. Well, I would you, be an you oil think baron. about that? Yeah, I, I would. would. I would be, I would be an, or, an oil baron, you know? Like, can we, you just need... You can we just hear need... what that sounds like? Ha ha! <laughs> so, you want to buy five stock in my company? <laughs> you want to invest in my railroad? No, I don't. My family is just starving. Ah, starving well, maybe if you work a little harder, boy, you you'll be able to afford some land. more food at my Please. company store. I just want a drop of water, and all you give me See, is this black oil. You're closed into Please. my walled garden. My lungs are dark. You are closed into my walled my garden. Dark, your lungs don't work, heart. and you will buy oh, my Snickers God. bars for five times the market value. <laughs> Please, I just want benefits and all you give me is just more oil. No, you don't get benefits. And sin. Schlatt Schlatt wakes up in the morning uh, and he he says, Hmm, seems like a wonderful day for some good old fashioned union busting. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, God. So, yeah, I mean, I did the Universal trip, and then I got drunk in Vegas. It was great. $5 a day? No fucking way! (laughs) (laughs) For only eight hours of work? (laughs) I don't think so. If you're not working for 24 hours, then you're not working hard enough at all. Mm, $5 a wage? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Mm, Perhaps that is a wage for children. Oh, great idea. (laughs) If the poor can't afford not to inhale fumes, then do they really have the right to breathe? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, perhaps you should invest in better lungs <laughs> <laughs> have you ever guys read have you read the book or seen the movie repo men no no repo men is this it's this world in which there's a company that has created artificial lungs and Ooh. i think you can kind of tell where this is going yeah. they're really expensive and yeah. you, if you can't pay you die. for the lungs or the liver or mm. the heart artificial heart they will come and they will repossess their property from you. Because, like, imagine right. this: you like you're buying a heart, or or you need a replacement heart. And yeah. They, you know, and they offer it, and it's like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, I think and this it, is. I think you're talking about Nestle right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nestle is definitely one of the worst companies <laughs> they, that exists they are on in the, the world. They are on the fast track to just being what you just described. I mean, let's be honest. I, I agree. Well, honestly, I'd, I'd go as far to say that Amazon is heading that route real quick. Don't you think? I mean, the, they've got the fucking stores. They've got the... the, the I mean, the ease and, of and accessibility. The ease of accessibility for this artificial heart I need to survive is just, it's just, it's just so good. Amazon organs. Amazon organs. Yeah, Amazon just outcompetes everyone Amazon in the health. industry. It's a problem. Amazon it's health. Problem. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, listen. If and you're I, watching this, if you're listening to this, and for whatever reason, uh, this is an issue that's kind of close to me now. If for whatever reason, all right, you like to read and you listen to the Chuckle Sandwich podcast... Buy your books from like Barnes and Noble or something or a local bookstore. Don't buy it from Amazon because Amazon's monopolizing the book market next. That's what's coming up. So watch, uh, support your local fucking stores. Buy local, okay. folks. The buy world local. is coming to an end. It's all, yada, it's all yada. crashing down around us. And we're here. Don't have kids because uh, they'll just die. So Speaking <laughs> of which, but by the way, before we move on to the other topic we have today... The 2020 census came out, and the population growth was was went down by two percent in this. Let's decade. go! Let's go! Nobody two percent less baby. Finally, that's what I'm talking about. Finally, let it all curve <laughs> off and let us sink back into the primordial sludge, so we can fucking try again in three million years. Oh, the sun's gonna. That's blow what up I then. think here on the Chuckle Sandwich Number Six Comedy Podcast. 
Return to the sludge. Number six. Why not number one? That's my brand. Return to the sludge. Indeed. Listen to us on audio, by the way, folks. If you've got the chance, get us some downloads on audio, all right? Artificially pump that shit up so we're just so... Stream oh, man, we, Chuckle we Sandwich. so much more money if Stream you, if we just, us. I, we need you guys to scam for us, all right? We're trying to scam our way to the top. That's a lie if you don't know us listening to this podcast. Hold on. Before we go any further, please allow us to fulfill a contractual obligation. Ted, I got a problem, man. I got a problem. What's going on, Schlatt? What's going on? I sleep on a twin mattress on the fucking floor. Oh, on the no. floor, Ted. And I've been sleeping oh. on it since February when I moved into this new place. And you know what? I needed a change. I needed a change. How am I gonna how am I gonna sleep comfortably without a foundation, without a without a nice mattress, without a hundred dollar mattress I found on Amazon? Oh, how my are you God. gonna make oh, money if your sleeping is terrible? I'll tell you. So thank you to the sponsor of today's episode of the Chuckle Sandwich Podcast, Helix Sleep. Everybody's unique and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They've got soft, they've got medium, they've got firm mattresses. Ooh. Mattresses that are great for cooling you down if you sleep hot and great for warming you up if you sleep cold. Do you sleep cold? Uh, no, I sleep very hot. Oh, oh, yeah. Nice. And even Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. Why would you buy a mattress for someone else? Helix has a quiz on their site that you could take and it'll tell you exactly the right mattress for you. I took the quiz and I arrived at the Midnight Lux. It is right in between the firm and the soft. Schlatt actually has this mattress. This is yeah. what he sleeps on now. It's from Helix Sleep. I sleep on the Helix now. They, they sent me the foundation, the mattress, a bed frame. <laughs> so if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't even have to go to the mattress store ever again. Helix was actually awarded the best mattress overall by GQ and Wired. So if you want one of these bad boys, you can go on down to helixsleep.com slash chuckle for the best sleep of your life. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash chuckle. That's helixsleep.com slash chuckle for $200 off and two free pillows. Thank you to Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's episode. Now back to the show. Uh, guys, I, Charlie, I, got, I, got a bun I got two really cute guinea pigs and I need a segue. Can someone give me a segue? Charlie, hey. you got really two cute guinea pigs. I did. <laughs> uh, do you want to see them? Yeah. All right, I'll go get him. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do, baby. Fucking hate guinea pigs. Okay, so I fucking hate guinea just pigs. Just a heads up. I don't know why he's doing this. What? Just a heads up. Uh, I've got, it's two guinea pigs. They're both girls, yeah. of course. Awesome. Okay. Mochi, Mochi and Fern. Okay. That sounds cool. Fern is, is a little new, so I'm not going to try and bring her down, but Mochi likes when I hold her, so I'm going to see if I can get her uh, down here. We'll see what All happens. Right. Do you think okay. that you can... You guys don't talk about anything too funny while I'm gone, okay? okay. Don't get too uh, yeah, funny you know, here. I, I, right. We don't, we don't do that without you. You're, we, you're we the meat never, of the sandwich, Charlie. We would never. Right. We would never you're talking to a mayonnaise... You're talking to mayonnaise between two butt ends yeah. of bread right now. You're not, you're not about to make this, uh, make this show go vegan. All right. You're no, not about to do no, that. Well, no, 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 no. Okay, hopefully go up and get your soon. little pet, uh, if and not, we'll see you in a minute. Going horribly wrong. It's a possibility. See you in a bit. Okay. Fucking hate guinea God, pigs. Dude. What rats? Okay. The only rats. real, the only real advantage to having a guinea pig is if you can teach it to kill. That's really apl applicable to any pet. And can you really teach a guinea pig to kill? I mean. You hear that? You hear that, Mochi? There's a bunch of motherfuckers on the show saying some shit about you. <laughs> oh, saying some shit about you. Look at her. Aww, oh. I can't very see her. Cute. See her. You can't even see her. Very cute. Wow. If you guys could that see thing. her right now, you would be in disbelief. I'm gonna try. I'm and sure I would. I'm gonna try. I'm and sure I would lettuce. be. I would not be able to believe. Oh yeah. So now, She's so now gentle, that it's crazy. So are you gonna train this thing to like kill? This thing to kill, and you already know how, right, Mochi? Look at that. You I said, mean, you said kill, and I, I, I felt her blood less <laughs> spike a little. Yeah. Hmm. It's not good. Yeah, here, I've got some lettuce for you. It's okay. I have a question, Charlie. <laughs> How are you going to prevent the terrible accidental death that most guinea pigs and hamsters are condemned to? Why would you say this? Like, this well, is, I just I, mean, I just true. think that I think that most small animals like that, everybody has this fucking story where at least one of them was like, I don't know, like their head was like a bucket was on the ground. 
and their head, they were partially under the bucket. And then they're, you know, like you come and sit down on the bucket and then the fucking <laughs> guinea pig like gets crushed <laughs> in between the lid of the bucket and the eyes oh pop God. out of the fucking head. Can and you... like, that's just how it happens. That's how most of them die. Well, like, some I just hear crazy wonderful. shit like that. You're wonderful, Mochi. I, how are you going to protect it? I very much guy. so hear often about hamsters just like throwing themselves out of it's shit. It's okay, Mochi. Yeah. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a comedy podcast, Moch. It's a comedy <laughs> podcast. <laughs> the sixth the most popular one. Six yeah, popular. Mochi can't understand English though, Charlie. Keep going, keep going, and it's going to turn into a true crime podcast. Isn't that right? Mm. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh my goodness. She's so fucking I'm really cute. enjoying uh, Charlie's what would you call this? A baby voice, I suppose. This is, yeah. Using with the guinea pig. To, you're supposed to I want Charlie to talk to me like this. <laughs> hey little, hey little, uh, mm. little schnatter. <laughs> I'm using this voice because they get calmer if you use a voice like this. And oh, really? If you are watching this video version right now, uh, which you should watch the audio or listen to the audio too, but uh, she is just fucking up this lettuce like there is no tomorrow. Uh, wait, wait! Bring it up to the microphone so our audio listeners love you to yeah, death. Yeah, I'm bringing can hear it. I'm bringing Jambo up to the microphone right now. Let me see if okay. he's uh, in the mood to talk. Let's see if Mochi is okay with. You that. ready, bud? This is your time. I I have the sixth most popular podcast comedy okay, podcast. Mochi. He's We're number so 29 tired. on the USA. He is so tired. You are so tired right now, aren't you? All right, get the animals out of here. Get You're the just animals a tired out guy. of here. It's okay to Enough be tired. Enough visual bits. I'm tired. Right. I'm Toss tired of Ted out. Nivison. I'm so tired of Ted running this podcast with him. <laughs> Go shut the fuck up. One day Fred. it'll just be you and me. You oh and me, God. Jambo, editor, till the end of editor, time. Boost this audio of Mochi just eating lettuce into the mic. You hear that? We were on such a roll. Mm. This is the best the show has ever been. Mm. You, you, video, you guys are gonna. Ted doesn't play. have a pet because he's lonely and lame. Come on, give us a meow. Give me a meow, Jambo. I didn't buy you to be silent. Mochi, you want to give them a little, uh, a, a little noise? Hey, that's my. Hey. You want a meow? You want a woof? <laughs> You want a wolf? We should move into a we should you move a into a normal a normal topic now. Do you want a wolf for the for the cat for the microphone? You want to give them a little you know, sniff? Give me, 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 meow. You want meow? to sniff? You want to sniff the audio listeners? You want to give it a little sniff? Chant sniffer? Sniff Hope no one listening to this number six comedy podcast has any good. I can feel I can feel, I can feel the ratings drop as this goes on. No, they're gonna fucking love this. Mm. Okay, he's gone. I still have uh, Mochi. Keep going the topic because uh, she is not going to leave until she has devoured all this lettuce. So uh, uh, okay, all well, right. Well, Ted, I mean, you went gambling. I Tell did. me about I that. Went, uh, I went gambling. I, I I did a trip. I I did a trip to Vegas very recently. I'd never gone to Vegas before. Mm -hmm. um, it was definitely an interesting experience to say the least, but I did gamble for the first time. I've never gambled before. Mm -hmm. 23, I've been able to gamble for two years. That's what crazy. did um, you gamble on? Really bad so mode, I'm a bit embarrassed to say this, but I, 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 I took out a Don't couple. Say slots. Don't say slots. I did slots. I did oh, slots. we did slots. <laughs> Okay. I did oh, slots because I wanted worst. to try it because it, it was like it's the closest thing to what I understand too, being like doing arcade shit, you know? Yeah, it was like an arcade. No, that makes game. sense. It makes um, sense. But I ended up losing like 220 bucks on mm. <laughs> slots. Yeah, you know. Um, but that's what I, happens me, when you get yeah. that's generally well, what happens. Well, I called yeah. Schlatt one day because I needed him to upload the the podcast for the Minx episode, and he was telling me, like, Ted, you do realize that 90% of the casino's profits come from Slots. slot machines and i didn't yeah. realize that but it, given that statistic i would have avoided them entirely but i didn't i didn't actually end up getting into anything yeah. else besides that so when you when you and me go schlatt you're gonna have to show me how to do roulette and shit like that oh well roulette is easy they spin a wheel and drop a ball and then if you pick the right color you you get double and oh, if you pick the wrong color the yeah yeah i know you drop the ball all the time <laughs> you drop the ball all the fucking time. Well, I mean, we all so do. We she's looking all do. like she's about to take a little bit of a gamble right now, so I'm gonna put her Ooh. back. Hey, it's <laughs> all right. It's okay. But, but yeah, dude. One thing. 
the one thing that was uh, when I was when the person I was with when we were driving to um, to Vegas. It's okay. Something about I guess it's because from LA to Vegas there's just one fucking highway the whole way. It took us. It's supposed to be normally with no traffic. It's like a fucking four hour drive or something mm-hmm. like that. It took us like six or seven hours to get there oh. because there was this like hour. If you ever look at Google Maps, there was like this hour and a half delay to get to uh, to Las Vegas. So that what we ended up trying to do was we were looking on ways. We were looking on all these other shit to find to see if there was some sort of other road we could take through this mm. fucking desert right. to get to Las Vegas. And we found that there was this option between. Um, going right on a uh, highway, merging off onto something, another smaller route, or to continue on where we were going. And at the last second, in the last maybe 30 seconds before I was turning, Google suddenly updated and cut off like an hour and a half. Oh. And and we made our first gamble of the entire trip <laughs> where we chose to go with the Google way, which ended up being even more chaos because then – we get off and it takes us onto a dirt road and oh. turns out a lot of other people are using Google Maps. Mm. So there's traffic on, on the, the dirt road. On the dirt road traffic. <sighs> That's And big. like imagine imagine like the most like a lot of the houses and property out there is just in the middle of nowhere, a lot of sand and everything. And we're on this like dirt road next to the highway. Yeah. And then I see people start turning onto the extra other roads. And I'm in my truck, so I'm like, well, fine. So we're taking another additional route, and I'm basically driving over sand at this point with all these other cars. And then we eventually return to where the highway, return onto the highway is the the that zone. But everyone who is trying to avoid that traffic is also trying to get onto this on-ramp. So you've got people driving over, like, just making their own roads. If you can imagine the worst driving conditions and the most assholes on the road, they mm. all were just in this place. I'd imagine I, I'd call that place New York City. But I mean, no, but you know, this might be like, this might be the second most common place. Like, imagine normal traffic. If you're on normal traffic on a highway and you and you see you see that one guy that like pulls out into the breakdown lane and goes yeah. around, yeah, you know, and then you don't see that often. It. Imagine everyone is yep. doing that and they're all trying to cut each other off with zero shame whatsoever because yeah. everyone's just sitting in the hot sun Drivers. and just, and I didn't get my truck fixed by the way. So the air conditioning doesn't really work. Oh, so, but it ended up being a good trip. I mean, it ended up, you know, we stayed at the Bellagio, yeah, you lost you know, we saw the bucks. fountains, we saw the fountains. It was, That's it was nice. a good trip. I would definitely, I would definitely like the, to, uh, to, to uh, do that with some, Ted, some other folks. Favorite part, future. Ted. What was your favorite part? The most interesting part was that people just straight up smoke in the c- casinos. I was People were walking around just smoking cigars. Oh, really? Yeah. There was like an like entire, like zones? in this a casino, in this, there was no smoke zones. The entire casino was a smoke zone. Damn. That sounds bad. I would see, a, there was definitely, I probably got like maybe like a like 1% secondhand smoke from like, I probably yeah. smoked like a, like the, what would be worth like a couple you took a cigarettes that weekend. <laughs> Holy um, shit, man! Jeez. But th- I saw this one lady who was like, she was sitting in a slot machine. She's got a, gl- <laughs> she's got a fucking glass of whiskey in one hand, and then like a Cuban in the other. And that's why and they allow got, it. Like f- she's got like five hundred dollars in in w- in the slot machine that she's gambling, oh and God. she's just tapping the thing to Jesus. keep rolling over and over again. And then we saw them later, and they had they were like like twenty bucks left, and they had they just oh. lose it all. It's always oh, I mean, a, you know, man. you know how it is. The house always wins. The house know? always wins. Where do you and guys Ted, think the you know, sponsor money goes? Where do you think it goes? We were talking about it earlier. Let's all it goes I, to the house. In gambling, it goes always, to the house. It like, always comes I, back I, to the I, house. I say, I say only, but that was, that is just because I had already in my mind sort of set apart a certain amount of money I was willing to gamble for this weekend. Like I was like, I, I was like. Maybe it was like three hundred dollars. I was like, okay, I'm gonna put three hundred dollars towards gambling. I'm not gonna go over that because I don't want a fucking gambling addiction. So, I I ended up using like two hundred twenty of that on the slots, and then I just I didn't use the extra eighty, and then it was like, you know, yeah. it didn't seem like. But I definitely do. I think, you know, it it was mostly we met we mostly went for the for the like rent. Like, there's a lot of cool restaurants and stuff, and and um. There's a lot more experiences in Vegas these days, I think, than there was like back in like the 50s when it was like the gambling zone. 
because there's like it's more like a there's a lot of family resort shit you know mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. i i agree i agree i think the whole i think the whole family should learn to take risks and charlie <laughs> we gotta get the kids started early um I completely agree there, this is one thing maybe charlie well actually you don't even drink so this this wouldn't even be an advantage for you but there was a taco me. bell there was a taco bell cantina Fuck and they taco were selling bell. they were selling alcoholic baja blasts in oh, these giant swirly cups jesus christ that is yeah, a whole no, that great. is a whole mixture of uh of cultures <laughs> whole, mixture of, whole mixture of cultures whole mixture of problems right there oh, um, God. but overall very cool experiences all around Coming from the Ted Town. I'm jealous, man. Did you say why you chose Vegas? It um I just had never been to Vegas before, really. Like I in Knock my 2016 road trip with Tucker, we we had stopped in Vegas just to get a bumper sticker, but I'd never I'd never been in a circumstance where I was old enough or like financially ready to go to Vegas. And like this is the first time ever that I have like money in my life that really that I have like money yeah. that I could just kind of like throw And you can make it like and that. it's crazy. You can make it more money there. That is true. That is true. And it feels yeah. so good. Yeah. It 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 does. And you there... shouldn't stop. Okay. So uh, I'm sort of lost here, Charlie. Are you saying that I should You Charlie, are you a gambler? I uh I just I just I just think it's um I think it's crazy they Have they you seen give us Kakeguri? A... What's Kake... Are you ready to th- What's Kake that Kake one gamble? Is it an anime? The, that's the gambling anime. Oh my god, an anime? You know, Schlatt's, you know, Schlatt's big in anime. It's Schlatt's a huge anime. She's Schlatt's so anime big girl. in anime. And he's a compulsive gambler as well. He has a And he's ready to addiction. throw it all on the line for one big gamble. To gambling in anime. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to talk about today. I mean... Well, I uh, I, got, I got my two topics. You got anything else? You guys got anything else you want? Hey, to talk I ran about? out of lettuce for Mochi. I don't think there's much else to discuss. Um, really? Yeah. Flat? But she's up. She's up there rolling the dice now because of you, Ted. Fucking terrible influence. She I'm gonna go right. gambling. We're all gonna go gambling. We're all gonna go together. Yeah. Charlie, would you would you go to Vegas? You know, I I've never had the desire to because. But I don't... guess just to have the yeah. experience. I mean, there's like nothing in there I'd particularly like, right? Like I wouldn't. Go to Vegas. It is so. Here's what I will yeah, say: if but you, why not? Even if you don't sure. necessarily like to um, gamble yourself, it is very fun to watch people gamble too. That I is would, something that you can like witness and like and like enjoy because you because especially when you're with your friends because you can kind of enjoy. Yeah, when you see I would go with some friends and bring two hundred and be prepared to basically spend two hundred dollars for the entertainment. The entertainment being me losing two hundred dollars yeah. to gambling. <laughs> yeah. um, so that is what that is what I would expect. It's really fun to go out to the dinners and stuff like this. One dinner we went to, it was like this place called Bazaar Meat, but not like bizarre meat, like Bazaar meat right and right. what we did was we had this it was probably the it was a very it was a very expensive dinner but it was like it was cool because it was one of those experience dinners that you do where they bring out every little little pieces of everything yeah you know and that's those kind of experiences i think make it worth the money spent because it's like you don't really get that anywhere yeah. else but you know so that's that's why i uh as I good it, as yeah. good as that sounds, as good as that sounds, Ted, as good as it sounds to have all those little tapas, it doesn't come close. Tapas. Doesn't come close to the chuckle sandwich. Sandwich. Ooh, Podcast. you already knew it was coming. You already knew it yes, was coming. That's very. We true. did it. We did it. Well, Done. thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the Chuckle Sandwich Podcast. Audio listeners, love you to death. Video listeners, you're all right. Um, this has been. Us talking, chatting. What do we? What do this we? This has been it? us. This Goodbye. Is- <laughs> <laughs> Catch you next week, folks. Oh God. Hopefully not. Bye bye. <laughs>